I've got lots of fun stuff to show and to talk about today. Y'all like so much stuff that I had to make notes and <laughs> I almost never make notes for a video because I just end up confusing myself. I'm going to show you how to do um, this technique. This is not new and it's it's not mine. I don't, I don't know who invented it, but it's a quite clever one. It's that um, packing tape on a gel plate thing. Um, but we're going to give it a twist. And not just the stenciling on top thing. Y'all have seen me do that before. But I have another little twist to show you. A surprise second twist. So we're like twice the twisted or <laughs> something. <laughs> so we're going to do this. I'll show you how to do that. And I'm also going to show you um, where to get the stencils that I use to do this. And I will tell you how to get those stencils at a discount. And then I will also give you the opportunity to win those stencils for free. Okay? That's a lot, right? All right. Let's just get busy. Let's jump right in and let me show you how to do these tapes. These are, it's just clear packing tape. You can use them um, for, you know, any, pretty much any application that you would use a, um, you know, a, a cut off strip of decorative paper, painty paper. They can be used in your journals, on a journal page, as an embellishment, as like a, a washi tape. These are not sticky on the back, but I'm pretty sure we can all manage a glue stick, right? So they can be like a, a, a washi tape alternative. Um, and even ones like this one in particular would make a very cool journaling spot because look at this stencil. It has lines that you can write in. I'm going to show you more about that stencil because I think it's one of the really the coolest, most cleverly designed stencils I've seen in a long time. So, um, yeah, those are just some of the things you can do with these. You can cut them up for collage. So if you're always thinking, oh, I never have cool, you know, painty bits like everyone else does, well, now you can make you some painty bits, okay? Let's get started. What you're going to need is a gel plate of your choice or any kind of, you know, whatever you like to monoprint on. It doesn't even have to be particularly clean. <laughs> Uh, mine is on a piece of glass. That's just how I use it. You are also going to need a brayer to go with that. You are going to need some acrylic paints, which I will talk more about. Um, you're going to need a little brush of some sort. Just, you know, doesn't really matter what kind. You will need packing tape, of course. And mine is... I don't know what two two inch wide about approximately uh, I use just the cheap scotch brand that I get on uh, or the the scotch off brand that I get from Amazon so you're gonna need that you might need a bone folder you are definitely gonna need some waxed paper and okay about the wax paper you can also use parchment paper, but I do not recommend deli wrap. And I'll explain why, but just cheap um, dollar store wax paper is good. And if you have some that's already really dirty from, you know, putting in between your painty pages, that's ideal. <laughs> so you're going to need dirty wax paper, basically. <laughs> you are going to need a white gel pen. I use the Uniball Signo UM153. There it is. White gel pen. And oh, yeah, you're probably going to need some stencils. Okay, the stencils that I'm using today are from a company called A Colorful Life Designs. Okay, here's what I really like about these designs. And there's all kinds of different designs for everybody's taste, but she has a lot of the kind that I like to use to doodle around. Because you know I like to do that um, contrasting black or white 
over painty stuff and then use the gel pen, you know, that thing. And a lot of these are really good for that. And I will have a link in the description below to a Colorful Life Designs website where you can pick up these stencils. I will also give you a discount code at the uh, end of the video that you can use for 10% off. And um, they do ship internationally. You, if you're ordering internationally, you're gonna have to pay some shipping because we all know how expensive that is. But in the U.S., shipping is free for orders over $50. And other than that, it's a $5 flat rate for shipping. So that just makes it super simple, super affordable. Um, so I'll talk more about that in a minute. And I'll tell you about the giveaway, too, because I'm going to, there will be a drawing so where you can win these exact designs that I'm going to use today. But first, Let's get to the creative part here. On your jelly plate, you're gonna wanna put some acrylic paint, right? So I have chosen some colors from DecoArt Traditions, and I will list these colors down in the video description if you want to get these just exact same colors. But just pick the colors you want. I've chosen a lot of red and orangey colors, red, orange, yellow, because, you know, it's fall. And we've got just a few more minutes of fall left before we transition into everything Christmas. So that's why I chose those. I added a couple, like a blue and a teal. And then you're going to need a, I'm using sort of an off-white and a black. So, grab you some acrylic paints, colors of your choice. You don't need this many. I mean, you could do, you'd do fine with four, and then a black and a white. But I like options, so I've got extras here. Now, I'm gonna just start putting some of these on the plate. And I'm just gonna kinda do a couple of traditional jelly prints just so you can see some of the designs and how cool they are and I'm going to brayer those a little bit and all of these colors get along well together so I don't have to worry too much about making mud here but then I do want to kind of kick it up a notch, so I'm going to add a little bit of a blue like that. And this will make mud with the orange, so you want to be careful with it. And that's all we need. Okay, I'm going to turn it this way and use a couple of these. Now these 6x9 stencils I've used just like this. And if you use a small piece of paper, you know, you don't get the border. If you use a full size sheet, you're going to get a border around it, which I happen to like. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Put the full size sheet. And my paper is kind of thick. It's text weight, but it's 32 pound. It's that Hammer Mill Color Copy Digital paper, 32 pound, which is my favorite text weight paper, computer paper, ever. And see, you get the little border around it. And you also get a beautiful print. Love these colors. Now, I'm going to take this over here. When I'm through with my stencil, I want to lay it painty side down on some dirty waxed paper. <laughs> kind of press another one to it. And there is a reason for this, so do this. And then I might add some of this teal color. And smush it on. This time I'm going to put down two stencils side by side. They don't fit. I'm using an 8.5 by 11. Uh, gel plate so they don't fit exactly but that doesn't bother me because you know if you've watched me before y'all know that I am not all about perfect gel prints I am all about 
flaring, messy, crusty gel printing. And ooh, see, look how pretty and, and autumn-y it looks, right? Love that. And these I'm just setting on the floor to dry so they don't get stacked on each other. And then again, I am going to put this on some wax paper, smish it down, and just leave it. Same with this one. Now, I've got kind of quite a bit going on here, as you can see. And I would probably set this aside to dry and get, you know, kind of crusty. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to do it wet. I'm going to show you what's going to happen here. I'm going to take a piece of packing tape and then just lift the excess paint off of the gel plate like that. And then you get the, if you can tell, you get the design, a little bit of the design, and then the color. See? Cool, yeah. All right. Set that somewhere where it won't stick to anything, and just keep doing that with strips of packing tape. Now you can certainly, you know, intentionally decorate your plate and then lift it with the tape. I think that's what I've been seeing on uh, videos. I looked at videos for this. And that's done a lot, but I really kind of like it doing it like this as a cleanup method. You can go over and over your plate. The more you pick up, the less sticky your tape is going to be, and eventually it's just going to not pick up anything really. That's fine. Pick up what you can. And then you can, uh, while those are drying, move on to do more prints. And we're going to do that. But before we do, I want to show you what's going on over here with these the stencils and the wax paper. Okay, we peel them up. They're going to leave some paint behind. And you may have some uh, leftover paint from... See, this was from letting some, uh, putting it between journal pages, you know, so they don't stick together. You get those edgy mark deals, you know what I'm talking about. See, look at all that. So peel these up. And then what you can do is lay your tape down, oh, that's a good one, on the wax paper and actually peel some of this up. I thought I had a sample. Here's one that I did that to. You can see where I had just laid the painty stencil down and then I put the tape on and peeled it up. And this is why I recommend not using deli wrap. Um, you can do it, it's possible, but when you peel up on deli wrap, you're gonna take a layer of the paper with you because this is actually dry wax paper and it just doesn't have the uh, resist qualities that a waxy wax paper or a parchment paper would have. So you'll get a layer of paper with it, which is not a huge issue. It just, um, you lose a little bit of the transparency that way. So let me show you how to pull off of these. Let's use this one because it looks like there's quite a bit on there. Sometimes I can't tell which side it's on. I think it's that one. <laughs> we'll find out. Pull off a piece of tape. Lay it down on the painty wax paper, and you're going to want to use a bone folder or something similar to kind of burnish it. And just go ahead and do yourself a solid and leave one end not burnished down. <laughs> Otherwise, you will just shred the tape trying to pull it up. So leave a handle on them. Burnish this down, and then peel it up. And then you get the cool design from your wax paper on your tape. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's the twist. <laughs> I promised a twist. There it is. <laughs> well, 
Let's do it to one that's not quite so defined. See, this one's kind of messy and it is, just looks like, almost like a muddy mess. That's okay. And there you have it. And just like on the plate, you can sometimes get another pull from it depending on how much sticky is left so there's that one and then go through some of your old wax paper that you've used you know to separate your journal pages like this and then pull these up I think that's on this side. So I'm going to take this one has lots of open space on it. So oh no, I can't. That one's just I want to save that one just like it is because it's just a little awesome. Let me get a new one. Oh yeah. There we go. So all that's left to do after that is to give it some contrast. Here's what they look like when you pulled them. And you know, like I said, on this one, I went back in and I added some yellow, just took some yellow on my finger and striped it down there intentionally just to add intentional color and contrast. Or you can just leave them as is. Then what you wanna do is turn them over so it's the tape side is up. That's the side with the paint on it. And then you're going to want to put a contrasting paint color over what you lifted. And that contrasting paint color can be anything. You can use black or white or any other color. Just whatever you want. It's totally up to you. I'm going to use this um, DecoArt Traditions in Warm White, which is kind of a, it's kind of a warm white. <laughs> That's an off-white, and I'm going to want to brush that on like so. You don't have to be neat. Just get it on there. And what that does is it creates a background for what you lifted and just really makes it pop. Well, let me find one with more open space to show you. And there we have it. Okay, now you can do your over the thing. Let's see. Let's do this one. Let's take another one of our stencil. I love this one. Let's do this one. Some black paint. And I don't have another palette. Yes, I do. And I'm going to use my favorite stencil brush, which is one of these that um, will be back in my Etsy shop soon. They're sold out. I really can't keep them very long. And... Put just a little bit of paint. You want your brush like almost dry. Shall I zoom in? I think this would be a, a good, uh, good place to zoom. How about that? And just lightly fill in. And there you have it. Gorgeous, right? Keep it moving and a light touch. A little bit of paint and a lot of repetition is what works. Have beautifully stenciled results on your super cool background, right? I love this.
There we have it. Uh, all right, here we go. Orange and red and red and yellow and mix. Now, let's do this one and this one, like so. Piece of paper. What you can do too, you can use a clean brayer to help you press down if you want. Sometimes for me, it's easier to just press my fingers in there. Other times, I use the brayer, but like I said, I'm not interested in pristine prints, so it doesn't matter. That was just an FYI. And then, ooh, those are pretty. Lift these off and add some of this blue and this blue. that and then put them back only reversed no good reason just because oh i just put that painty side up okay that is not gonna work <laughs> i'm glad i caught that <laughs> whoops plan b there we go now print Voila! Gorgeous. And let's use this one and this one. Now, if you're an old school rubber stamper, you might remember Mary Kay De La Fuente from back in the day. She had a rubber stamp company called Stamp Camp. And she manufactured a rather awesome line of rubber stamps. And Mary Kay is now doing stencils and her company is A Colorful Life Designs. So, She's been at this a long time. She has a passion for creating uh, tools and supplies for artists and crafters. That is just what she's all about. She loves doing this. And she's very good at it because she knows exactly what we want and what we like. <laughs> so I am super excited that she is back at it with the stencils. And y'all, Mary Kay, has the laser cutter and cuts herself. She's not sending these off and having someone else do it. So, and I think that's super cool because, you know, she's never really out of stock <laughs> of anything. If something runs out, she cuts another one, yeah. And plus, it keeps the cost of the stamps down because, you know, she just completely cuts out the middleman. And that way, everybody wins. This one to me looks like camo. I love that one. And this one is one of my favorite doodle shapes. I need to stand over these and press harder. The thicker the paper you use, the harder you have to press to get a good uh, stencil image. You know, if you're using like uh, deli paper, 
you just lay it down, do like this, and it's fine. But this is thick paper. There we go. So I really have to kind of get over it and press down. Got a lot of my brayer. Brayer on a little more. Put that one down. This one's fun to trace around. There we go. Now, I want to show you this girl right here because I think she is super cool. And she's one of the few that I actually washed. I had to stop and go wash her because, you know, any stencil that has little fine lines like this, it's easy for paint to get gunked up in there. So these are really the only kind that I bother to keep clean. The other ones with big openings, I rarely wash them. But yeah, this kind you do have to clean on occasion so that it will print well. And they print best on thinner paper like deli wrap. They don't do well on the thick paper like I'm doing. Pretty much all stencils print better on thinner paper. If you want to know the truth about it. Okay. Black paint. Brayer it on evenly. And let's put this little lady right here. She also does really well just um, doing her direct to a piece of paper. Just beautifully. This is a piece of deli paper that I'd use to clean my plate off. Or actually, this may be wax paper. I'm not sure. Either one's fine. And I'm just going to make sure that I press the lines good. So you can kind of see the paint as it uh, deposits on the paper. So it makes it easy to see that you've got a good print. And then peel her up. And she is ready for you to write on her dress because it just wants to be written on. I'm telling you, it does. Now here's where your gel pen's gonna come in. Now you can go back on these ones where you've done your stenciling on top and then you can just kind of trace or doodle or add little accent things or whatever you want. Okay, let's do this. I'll just do a little bit to show you to get the idea. And I wouldn't try to make these perfect. Just keep it loose and doodly and fun. And try to write on the tape as much as possible and not the paint because your pen nib can scratch the paint right off. And that is another thing that, you know, yes, this is a slick plastic that you're working on. So it's super easy to scratch stuff off. So you're not gonna wanna put these on the cover of a journal that you're gonna throw in your purse, right? Because uh, it's not gonna hold up. You want these on a page or Put them on a card or, you know, something that's not going to see a lot of wear and tear. If your gel pen doesn't work good on the tape, use a paint pen. One of those uh, skinny Poscas, I think, would work great. Or a Sharpie paint pen. Whatever you've got that will work. And you can do your over stenciling in a color other than black. You can use a light color and then use um, black permanent pens to go around your stenciling. Let's 
So that is all there is to it. I'll do a few more of these and I'll put some, maybe a few close-up pictures at the end, but I think that you get the idea for this little technique here. And I want to remind you to go visit a Colorful Life Designs website and order you up some of these stencils. You can get, um, the ones I've used here are just a few of what she has. She's got a whole bunch of really great designs. And if you use the code SHANNON10, S-H-A-N-N-O-N-1-0, -N -N you will get 10% off of your order. Now, as if that's not enough, you also have a chance to win one of each of the stencils that I've used here today. And I used 13. So, I know, okay, 13 is a baker's dozen, but I think it's funner just to say a dirty dozen. So we're calling it the dirty dozen. <laughs> These are my 13 favorites so far. And there's a link down below in the video description where you can run over to Rafflecopter and enter to win, and you will receive one of each of these stencils. Yours, however, will be clean, but you will get these designs. And that drawing is going to be going on, or we will take entries from now through Monday, let's say midnight central time on Monday, November 20th. And then on the 21st, I'll do the drawing. And these are what you will win. Now, the fine print, limit one entry for, per person. Um, you have until Monday, I said that. This particular drawing, this time, is open to U.S. only participants. And I'm sorry about that, international folks, but there's just a logistics issue. These are going to be, you know, mailed out just as soon as the winner is drawn, but they're going to be mailed out from an alternate location, so they have to travel. <laughs> and it's just a bit of a logistics issue to ship internationally from another location. <laughs> So, yeah, I hope you understand. Next time, we'll, we'll include international. But just, just for this time, it's a U.S.-only giveaway. So, y'all head on over to Rafflecopter, enter the drawing, go buy a Colorful Life Designs, order you up some stencils with your discount code SHANNON10, and tell Mary Kay I said, hey, girl. And you have to type it just like that, hey, girl. <laughs> and I think... That is all I have for today, y'all. The end.